Chatham House. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. What is Emmanuel Macron hoping to get out of this visit to two, uh, these three countries, Cameroon, Benin and Guinea-Bissau? Well, I think it, it's, it's two or three messages. The first is to reiterate something that his prime minister said in her policy speech to parliament a couple of weeks ago, which is that uh, refreshing, reforming, overhauling the French relationship with Africa remains one of his most important foreign policy priorities. So this is the first trip he's making outside Europe since his, uh, since his uh, second term began. But then he's also trying to recognize that there are deep wounds left from the past uh, in, in the relationship between France and the countries that it colonized in Africa, and that those wounds can affect the present. So in Cameroon yesterday, uh, he announced plans for a commission of historians, Cameroonian and French historians, to examine uh, the uh, massacres that were carried out um, in the 1940s uh, uh, in the builder in the decade or so before independence, when Cameroon or most of Cameroon was still under French colonial rule. And now in Benin, as it were, the gesture has come earlier because um, Two or three years ago, Macron launched the set up the committee of historians who then came up with this recommendation about the returning of cultural artifacts. Mm. And they've gone back to a number of countries, to Benin particularly, but also to Senegal and Madagascar, for example. So he's here in Benin in, in a way he's reaping, uh, uh, if you like, the, the benefits of the action that's already been taken. But then the final and really difficult and delicate aspect of the tour is that he's visiting two countries with really quite contentious records on governance. Um, particularly in Benin, uh, democratic structures have been dismantled, while in Cameroon, President Beer has been in power for a very, very long time, many decades. And so raising those issues, but probably in private, is that's probably the most delicate bit of this trip. I, I, I understand the point which you made where you said that France has always says it wants to reset its relationship, relationship uh, with that part uh, of Africa. But yesterday we had uh, Emmanuel Macron who was alongside, uh, uh, he gave a press conference in Cameroon where he sort of pointed out the hypocrisy uh, that was there in calling out uh, the current war in Ukraine a war. Um, this is something he would not really say to for instance, the Indian prime minister, would he? Uh, a country that has sat on the fence when it comes to Russia's war in Ukraine and abstained at the United Nations like many African countries have. I I don't know. I, th I think he might say it, actually. I, I, think, I think the point is, Macron has decided strategically that the relationship between Europe and Africa is absolutely crucial for the future of both continents and crucial for the future of France. Uh, as, a, as a European country with deep connections to Africa, the two country, continents are neighbors. And so he's giving special priority to that relationship. In the prime minister's foreign policy speech, she did, in the prime minister's policy speech, she didn't mention relations with any other part of the world apart from European countries except Africa. And so that he's giving Africa this sort of special priority. And when you put uh, a relationship so much at the front of the stage, that means that uh, the dialogue is much more complex. It's, but, you, you know, it's not so easy to just sketch around the side. I, I, I understand that. But another country that has a special relationship with Africa is Russia. Um, Sergei Lavrov just this week was in, uh, he was in Egypt, he was in uh, Uganda, Ethiopia, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, clearly, uh, Moscow is, is narrative building its own story, isn't it, uh, on the continent? Oh, yes. Moscow is trying to build two narratives. Um, it's, it's trying to avoid blame for the current uh, surge in world food prices and the pressure on cereal supplies, which of course is hitting many African countries very hard. At the same time, it's also trying to restore its position as a country that matters, as a country of power and influence. And that's why it's positioned itself as a security ally 
of uh, some African governments that are under pressure, particularly Central African Republic and Mali. And, and the Wagner both were present. Russian mercenaries from Wagner are deployed. But Macron can't, Macron can't uh, r rather than just um, trying to compete with Russia, it's more a case of saying, look, there are other partnerships that are long-standing mm. European countries that have been allied with Africa and are supportive with you. We recognize there are difficulties in the past. There are wrongs that have to be acknowledged, but we remain key partners. One of the things he stressed in his remarks in Cameroon yesterday was that France will remain uh, a, a provider of military support and assistance to African countries, particularly Cameroon has faces the threat of Boko Haram in the north. Then, of course, he isn't visiting the Sahel on this particular trip, but has done so uh, on a number of times, and French troops remain in the Sahel. Mm. And then in the final country on this tour, when he goes to Guinea-Bissau, um, that is uh, sending a, a message specifically to that country, which is not a Francophone country, but nevertheless, France is giving support, if you like, to a, a president who's democratically elected, who survived a coup attempt only, I think, in February. But also, Guinea-Bissau is the new president of ECOWAS, the West African bloc. Mm. That's it, if you like, the West African equivalent to the European Union. Yeah. So visiting in Guinea-Bissau for talks with President Mbalo, France is saying, we stand in support of ECOWAS, the West, West Africa's own regional bloc that is trying to manage the challenges of the region.